Lord Jesus, you are worthy to sit and to direct our lives. You are worthy to sit and to guide our lives. You are worthy to sit and to lead our lives. You are the one who lead us, Lord God. You are the one, Lord God, who show us the path and the way. Yes, there is no one like you. Yes, there is none like you. There is no one to deliver like you can deliver. There is no one to save like you can save. There is no one to restore like you can restore. There is no one, Lord God, to set free like you are able to set free. Lord, we need your presence continually in our lives. We need your presence continually in our families. We need your presence continually in all that we are, in all that we do, to the glory of your holy name. We're asking you, Lord God, that even as you lead us, you will satisfy us with your spirit continually. You will satisfy us with your presence continually, that our soul and our spirit our mind and our conscience, our body and our being, we completely be submerged in you. And Lord God, dive in you, be in you, completely wet and swimming in thy presence in order, Lord God, to experience who you are continually and continually. We are asking, Lord God, that your spirit will not depart from us, that your spirit, Lord God, that will sustain us, we help us. We honor you for what you do. We honor you truthfully for you are honored. We honor you truthfully for you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of everything. Take the atmosphere. Speak unto us for we are your children. Speak unto us for you are our father. Speak unto us for you are our God. Speak unto us, for you are our creator. Speak unto us, for we surrender unto you. We surrender to hear your word. We surrender to hear what you are to say unto us. For we are mere human, for we are mortals and limited. But in you, Lord Jesus, we are able to achieve all the purposes that is, Lord God, for your glory. So we asking unto you, speak unto us, lead us into your path, guide us into your ways, satisfy us, Lord God, with your continuous presence, that our lives be shaped and transformed, our activities, our businesses, our ministry, church, family, children, spouses, that only you, Lord God, who is able to change, bring, Lord God, the change that is needed in our lives, the change that is needed in our mindset, the change that is needed in our heart, so we may see you, so we may honor you, so we may give you the glory that is due unto you, now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in the book of John chapter 6, there were some disciples who were walking with Jesus Christ. But at the moment of time, they couldn't bear some of the teachings. But the one who stayed with the Lord, he said, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Say unto me, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. 
You got to say that with the conviction. Unto me, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord spoke to his disciple, which are each one of us who follow the Lord. And he said to many, it is not given. Even though they have here to hear, they will not understand. Even though they have eye to see, they will not see. But unto you, it is given to know. Not to think. Not to imagine. Assume. Not to guess. Hallelujah. He said it is given to know. Not to know the intelligence of heaven. Not to know the philosophy of heaven. Not to know the explanation of heaven. He says the mysteries. Mysteries engage into things that a human mind can never discover. Regardless on how he try. When the Lord mysteries is revealed to somebody, he ought to be the spirit only of the Lord who reveal it to our spirit and our spirit shoot it down to our conscious mind and our conscious mind can now become a natural mind for us. Until the Lord reveal those mysteries unto us, there is no way we will. <laughs> there is no studies or no digging that will reveal the mysteries of God. It's impossible. The word of God says, no eye have seen. Can you put that for me? No heard have heard. What was reserved? No eye have seen. Hallelujah. No heard here have heard. What was hidden? What was the verse? What was the chapter? First Corinthians chapter. Uh-huh. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's put that on the screen for us. First Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to read verse. Nine. Can we have on the screen, please? But as it is written. But as it is written. I had not seen. I have not seen. Nor ear heard. Not ear heard. Neither have entered. Neither into have entered into the heart of man. The heart of man. The things which God. The things which God had prepared. Had prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Amen. No one is impossible. But verse what? 10. It says what? Verse 10. But God. But God. So there is a but. Hallelujah. Amen. But God hath. Revealed. Revealed. Them unto us. Unto who? Us. Unto. Us. Unto. Us. By our. By his spirit. By the. Spirit. By his spirit. Mm -hmm. So his spirit, hallelujah, speak it to our spirit. And our spirit downloads it. You see, when you sleep, you are in your spiritual arena. And because it is spiritual, your mind cannot remember everything until it is shoot in your mind. So when you wake up, if your spirit did not download that in your mind, you, you will like, I, I know I dream, but I can't remember. But yet you were there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it is a spiritual life, you will see that nothing makes logical sense. You will be here talking with somebody, and suddenly you are somewhere there talking with somebody, and suddenly you are at church, and suddenly you are at work. You know what I'm saying? You understand that in this side life, you cannot be suddenly somewhere. <laughs> Even though you may have what we call the gift of 
translation. Hallelujah. But that gift, I can tell you. <laughs> Let me there. So, but God hath revealed them. Sometimes people will stick and stuck at the part that says, no high have seen. No, no high have seen until God reveal it to me. Until God reveal it to you. Until God reveal it to us. Read again. But, but God has uh -huh. revealed them unto us by his spirit. Uh -huh. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. So no wonder when you look at Nicodemus, he couldn't get any of those things. But yet he was very well versed in the word of God. Mm. Jesus Christ. You know, we have to think and we sometimes believe that if we know enough of the word of God, then we know God. Mm. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says it does not enter until it reveals it. When Isaiah looked and saw, it was by revelation. It was not by the law. You know what I'm saying? But the revelation is always tied to the word. Kind of like a, you will not have a, a vision reveal where you see Jesus sitting like a monkey. It won't happen. <laughs> it, it just won't happen. If you saw it, then you know the devil has spoken to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there are characteristics that is given to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Anyway. Let's take with us, building upon this, for the word of God that he has given unto us today, is established and settled. Hallelujah. Can we have uh, the program screen? Thank you. Established and settled. Last time we spoke about what? Three days to... Entering the promise. And now we have spoken the second part. And today the Lord just gave me established and settled. I didn't understand it. But after I got it, I said, oh, it's the following <laughs> of what he said. When you have entered your promise, last time we said you have to maintain your. So it's not only entering in. Because now you have entered, you have the promise, and, and, and then what, what next after? Hallelujah. You got to maintain your promise. And how do you maintain it? One with your, two with your, and three with your. Hallelujah. You cannot maintain the promises that God gives unto you if the tools to maintain them, you neglect them. Hallelujah. But after you maintain them, you are to be now established and settled. See, the children of Israel, when they entered the promise, they did not go broke because when they were entering, they already had things that the Lord gave them. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? They had riches. They, had, they were not that super rich, but they had riches. Starting with the riches that the Uzi, how do they call them? The Egyptian gave unto them. So you will realize that sometime in your life, you have certain things that you have that it gives you enough just to eat. But that's not the promise. Amen. That's the seed. And that seed, you act now to enter in your promise to seed. You don't seed in the wilderness. If you seed in the wilderness, you must know you will go. <laughs> You will leave it behind. It won't grow for you. So as you enter the promise that to maintain it, now God says he's going to establish you. What does it mean established? It means that you will durably remain. I read it again. You will durably remain. So he will establish you and settle you. In this case here, settling will make sure that no other rulers 
No other law will remove the root of what you have made. So once you are settled, there will not be no more law or no more condition that we take away. It's like when he says, there are two people who built. One built up on the rock, one built up on the sand. The one that was built up on the rock was settled. When the new law of the wind and then of the war, um, storm came, because it was settled, he did not crumble. Hallelujah. Amen. So established and settled. Can we read that verse, second, uh, first Peter? First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory. No, no, first Peter, Peter. Can we on the screen, please? First Peter. First Peter chapter You're having 5, first Corinthians. Put on the screen first Peter, please. Okay, go ahead. First Peter chapter. First Peter chapter five mm -hmm. verse ten. Mm -hmm. But the God of all grace. But the God of all grace. Who had called us. Who had called us. Unto His eternal glory. Unto His eternal glory. By Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. After that He have suffered. A while, after that ye have suffered a while, not for a long time. A while, not for your whole life. A while. Not for your generation is your generation to come. Hallelujah. He's speaking here to the covenanted children. He said, after that you have suffered a while, make you. Make you perfect. Make you perfect. Establish. Establish. Strengthen. Strengthen. Settle you. Settle you. Let's go on verse 7. Verse 7. Casting all your care upon Casting him. all your care upon him. Casting all your care. So what it is your care? Your burden, your ideas, that's your cares. Cares is whatever you care about, whatever you think about. Hallelujah. Whatever that is in your life, whatever that is, whether from your health, whether from your marriage, whether for your children, whether for your job, whether for your business, whether for your church, whether for your ministry, whatever that is called care in this life. Prayer is not your care. <laughs> so you're not casting that to him. <laughs> you got to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. But whatever else, casting all your care upon him, what does it mean? It simply means Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 33. That's all it means. Matthew 6, 33 tells what? Seek ye first, first the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. God. And his not righteousness. Or. And his righteousness. Righteousness. And all this of your care will be solved. So that you be established and settled. Imagine, if you are not established and settled, you will live like a the pool. You know the pool? <laughs> uh, they are in, um, like uh, the nomad. Okay? They never settle. From one way, from one place to another. They're wandering shepherd. They never settle. They're always on the go. So they cannot build. They cannot be established. But God did not send or call you so that you will keep on wandering in the wilderness. He didn't call and send you so you will keep wandering in your promises. Now you have entered the promise and you're like, okay, so what do we do? What, uh, what, uh, what do we do? How do we do? No, 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 no. He didn't send you because before to send you in the promise, he gave you the idea on how you're going to build it. Are you know what I'm saying? He told you, Moses, exactly the details on what and how to build the Ark of the Covenant. 
So before to enter the promise, they already have the Leviticus. Did they? How to live, how to function, how to live, uh, eat, how to whatever. So even before you enter where God is sending you, he's going to give you instruction. So once you enter there, you are not like, so Lord, what do we say? No. Because the promise is not there that you're going to figure out. No. You're going to figure out with God prior to promise. He's going to tell you exactly, my son, my daughter, when you go. Remember Jesus Christ. He told them, go. For until you enter the promise, you don't have the instruction prior to promise. He can tell you go, he will tell you. But as you go, he will tell you. Are you know what I'm saying? He will not let you go and then enter the promise. Now you have arrived. No, 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 no. He tell you the instruction, the law to make you a nation so that you enter the promise and you have a clear idea of what to do. The Lord Jesus said, go, you will find a colt, the little of a donkey tied by the crossroad. When you go, do what? Untie it and bring it to me. And if anyone asks you of why you do so, let the person know that the Lord has need of it. So you had the instruction. So you go with clarity. So when you arrive and something happened, you already know which way and how to operate because God instructed you how. Does it make sense? So, while you are going through what you're going, it's like a Joseph. Joseph going through that time into Egypt. It was for him a kind of wilderness and a place of preparation. He was being given the instruction and the different ideas. He started having the seed. He started having the deepness of everything that he needed. So he will be able to function as being the second in command. Does it make sense? When he was inside of the, of the jail, when he was inside with, what's his name? Potiphar, the master slave. Hallelujah. When he was inside, the Bible tells us that by him and because of him, there was grace upon the house of the master. See, he was slave. But because of him, everything was working. He did not have anything. They took from him everything, including his life, liberty, and his family, and all he could have had. But... His presence only was shifting the atmosphere of his detainer. Are you what I'm saying? But all this was after he has suffered for a while. Now, I'm putting it this way. You are a child of God. You come to God. You know you serve him. You know you obey him. You know you walk in his ways. You know you follow what he says. And then things just don't write right. I say don't write right. Don't go right. Hallelujah. Now you're asking yourself, Lord, but you say that so, so, and so. But what you have to remember is God may allow you to suffer for a while when suffering in that instance is not to tear you down, is to build you up. There are certain teachings and lessons you will not get if you're only eating ndule. Get my point? <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you will have to be hungry to the point. You see, in Africa, we used to eat bread and um, we, we take bread, we put butter inside, and we eat. Or we take bread, we put in water with sugar, and we eat. 
or we take bread and we eat with uh, pea, pine nut, uh, peanuts. You know what I'm saying? Or we take bread, we put palm oil inside and we eat. And we are happy. We don't get fat. <laughs> Do we? Have we? <laughs> Anything that you call junk food, we eat and we find. <laughs> and then, that time was a building so that at the time you are getting the instruction. Your mind is suddenly now searching on how to survive. Your mind starts searching how to remain afloat so that uh, you start now operating in places that are complicated. If you need to go from one place to another and you don't have a car, ma, you, if you need to go there, you will arrive. Even if it rains, but that place where you go, you know that this is the place where you got to get something. Even if it, but there is no, no neige in Africa, uh, we call it. No snow in Africa, at least not in the side of uh, West Africa, Central Africa. But even if it's not there, and then suddenly snow arrived, you will go. <laughs> because you have wired yourself to not let suffering overcome you. Somebody will tell you. Okay, today, you know, sometimes we will go to um, evangelism, open evangelism. When we will go to open evangelism, we don't take car. We don't take ride. We will be packed into the tr public transportation. And the public transportation that we had over there, in here, you can stand like this, clear from, you know, from pressure. Or you can sit down in most of the public transportation. Over there, you are parked like sardines. <laughs> am, I, am I right? We call it the bus. Sometimes when you get in, the, the door of the bus closed like that on you. So, you like, so somebody on the back will push you until you get in and then the door closed. Am I right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have learned that one. You have been wired that way. You start getting skills on how to find your way in the back way. Does it make sense? You have learned how not to say, I'm going to, yeah, it's like, not like, you know you got to get there. But there is no space. You won't be like, well, there's no space, I'm going home. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Some people, they get so stuck that the leg is outside, but the drive goes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The drive goes. He does not care. All he needs is to arrive at destination. Whether the neighbor is smelling or not, whether the neighbor is thinking or not, sometimes somebody can have his hand on the thing like that, and then you are under over here. Hallelujah. But you know you got to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying something that is not true. <laughs> Amen. You're uncomfortable. If you if you want lose your breath, lose your lose everything, but you will you will go because you know you must arrive. That's how you got to wire yourself in order to receive the instruction, the direction, the, the abilities, the skills that you know to need in order to fulfill and to be established. So you may suffer for a while as you are a child of God, as you are a called of God, as you are a, a, a chosen of God. But do not look at your suffering as a punishment. Let's go back to the word of God. First Peter chapter 5. We read, go back even a little more on verse 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. 
First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and gave it grace to the humble. Oftentimes I tell this. I say the Bible gives us and tells us that grace is unmerited. But here, the Bible gives us a clue of mystery on how to get grace. Wow. To be humble. For God says he giveth grace to the humble. So while grace is unmerited, unmerited, you can attract it by humbling thyself before him. So when the things are getting tougher, don't act like uh, you are the one who knows everything, questioning God by God, why, why, why? No. Humble thyself. He giveth grace to the humble, but he resisteth the proud. So if God resists you, that's not a wild suffering. That's punishment. That's different. You feel what I'm saying? That's different. But go next, verse 6. Uh -huh. Your microphone. Humble yourselves. Humble yourself, therefore. Under the mighty hand of God. You see, you want to be exalted. You want to succeed. You want to arrive. But you don't do all God say. Would that work? Can it work? Even if you toil, your, meaning you toil your day to day, night to night, when you finish, rain comes and phew. This one is not suffer for a while. This one is punishment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, when we talk about suffer for a while, I'm talking about those who have let their heart be directed by the Lord. The word of God said that if you fall, you have still a, and that vocate. You get back up to continue. That's different. But if you willfully fall, as not fall, if you willfully sin, hallelujah, the word of God said that he resists what? When you willfully sin, is that you proudfully, I'm talking about willfully, you proudfully denying the word of God. Does it make sense? So at that point, you might have certain things that will be contrary to the will that God has for you. But it does not mean it is the end of the day. It means there is way out in order to get the grace. How? To humble yourself. Therefore, humble yourself, therefore, under, under, under the mighty hand of God. And now when we talk about mighty hand of God, is a hand that can slap you? Is a hand that can lift you up? That hand decides how you're going to do with you. Are you know what I'm saying? If the hand of God decides to correct you because the Bible says that he chastises those he love. So if he chastises you and then you're like acting like a uh, wah, 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 you will long stay in that area of chastisement. But once you start acting like uh, uh, David, David said, Lord, it is a better thing to fall under your hands than to fall in the hands of my foes and my enemies. But he thought that falling under the hand of God would be like uh, with a uh, 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 chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> No, falling under the hand of God is heavier. Can you imagine that? By the time he realized, almost half of his uh, army was decimated, like his, or, uh, the, the people were decimated. Falling under the hand of God, he prayed that uh, his son will not die when he had an affair with who? Bathsheba, he prayed, he fasted. He knew he was a man after falling under the hand of God. God said, yeah, yeah, it, 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 I'm going to take it. You know what I'm saying? So falling under the hand of God is not just like a chocolate. 
Amen. But what it means is that after you have submitted yourself to God under his mighty hand, whether he will straighten you, whether he will slap you, whether he will lift you up, that your heart knoweth like David, you are my God. You are all I have. Do as you please. Do as you please, it's you, Lord Jesus. Do as you please, it's you, Lord Jesus. Do as it please, it's you, Lord Amen. Jesus. Do as it please, it's you, Lord Jesus. I am available. Now, here's a problem. Available. When you're singing this, you say, do as you please, I'm available. Yeah, you are available to be slapped. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you see, sometimes you say, Lord, do whatever you want, but in your mind, whatever you want, mean chocolate. Uh -uh. Whatever you want, mean whatever he wants. <laughs> if he has to cause in your family trouble so your neighbor will be saved, he will do it. Who is that? We know the story of who? Okay, no. Uh, um, John 11. Lazarus. Hallelujah. In the family of Lazarus, Martha called, Lord Jesus. I know you. You know me. And then we know each other. The one you love is sick. You cannot let shame come in our house. Please, come. The Bible says he didn't even listen to it. <laughs> he acted like he didn't even hear it. But you know when you pray, things happen. But you pray this time. Even a fly doesn't fly. <laughs> you say, Lord... If you are with me, now you get into the mode of Gideon. If you are with me, let the sun go by the left side. And suddenly the sun go by the right side. You say, ah. <laughs> You say, Lord, okay, this might be my vision. Let me put myself on the right side now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you work it out and then you find out that nothing happened. Nothing's moved. And you question it. What am I missing? Well, you are under the mighty hand of God. For after you have suffered for a while. He's teaching you some lessons that are valuable in order to establish you. Because when you are established, you will have truth in you that nobody will get you out of it. You know what I'm saying? When you are established, you will have truth in you that no one will take away. When you are settled, they will do everything they want to do. You will say, this one, I doubt we got. Because at that point... You have already learned and known and understood the principles and the ways and avenues of suffering. You have felt this. You see, there, are, there is a great suffering when you cry unto God and then you hear nothing. If you need help, and you know somebody is able to help you. And you call on the person. And the person acts like he doesn't even know you. That hurt more than the suffering you're having. You feel what I'm saying? Because you know that he's able. So they call Jesus. And the Lord Jesus says, mm -mm, I ain't coming. I ain't coming on purpose. Four days. And then the day he decides to go is the day that the guy had already, I mean, by, then, by that time the guy, I said the guy, uh, the guy, the brother already died, finished, stinking, puri, all together. So you're thinking my case that is handled by God 
will not be in the hand of the enemy, will not be so so and so, but it's only getting worse. The more you pray, the more it gets worse. And then you're asking yourself, but Lord, what am I missing? Am I praying wrong? What am I missing? It says you are under the mighty hand of God. So submission over here and humbling over here will be Lord, not my will, but your will. Sometimes not your will, but not my will, but your will. You will know in your mind, in your heart with certainty that there you're going to suffer good. Like the Lord Jesus at Gethsemane. When he said, not my will, but your will. It was not a gambling side so that uh, it might happen, you will not go to the cross. Uh -uh. He knew. By the time he said, not my will, but your will. He knew that the end. <laughs> That's why the Bible said that he humbled himself. That is humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Let him mold you. Because you see, there are certain trash in your life that need to go. But they are tied in your bloodline, in your bloodstream. Paul says, even the thing I know not to do, even if I stay here, my feet brings me over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he knows with certainty that there is not for him. But however, the flesh brings you. So God will start molding you because he wants to establish you in Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. So do not be afraid because there is a time, Bible says, after you have suffered for a. Your father sees. He will not let two things, his name be ashamed. Hallelujah. And you be ashamed for the sake of his name. For it says, no one who suffers for my sake's name will not receive back. No one who gives for my sake name. It says, those who are being persecuted, insulted for my sake name, bless are they. So all this is just for a while. So the response that you have as you are being established, for, you know, uh, being prepared to be established, that response will condition how established you will be. How settled you will be. And then after, once you have gotten now in a place where the Lord says, now I am well pleased with you. At that time, you don't even have to pray. The Bible say, even how you think and how you act will be not enough for God to do it. He will do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all you may ask or think. So when you say, Lord, please open the door for me. He just suddenly opens gates. Because he will do more abundantly. Above all, you ask or think. He says, you don't have because you don't ask. But he said, he's going to give you more than what you have ever even there to ask. So why are you asking, Lord, can I have a bicycle? He gives you a jet. Ay, ay, ay. Ah. Because he sees that at that time, he has now that he sorted you out. And then riches will no longer be something that will take you down. There are times if God would bless you, oh, you were gone. <laughs> there are some people God cannot give them car. Because the day he gives them car. <laughs> that same day, they drive like that. Brother, how you doing? <laughs> The Lord looks at them and says, no, you're going to walk. <laughs> Until the sole of your foot <laughs> will feel the ground. Then you will learn that you cannot just put your foot like that on the brake and then the, the accelerator. Hallelujah. Just to say, God will not let you. 
and all his riches until you have learned to submit and humble yourself under his mighty hand. So you're asking now, Lord, like the disciple or like the people, what shall we do? Amen? Let's go see what shall we do. Let's go back. In 1 Peter chapter 2. We were in verse 6. So we're going to read verse 7. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a result that he say that he may do what? Exalt you. Is he talking about Jesus Christ? He's talking about you and I. He says that he's going to exalt you in due time. Which due time? After you have been sifted and sorted for a while. Hallelujah. He knows that you are important. So if he exalts you, you might take for yourself some praise. You know what I'm saying? So he will make sure that your backbones are well strengthened. So when people are starting exalting you, remember... Paul, uh, um, uh, Peter, and John, when they went at the time of prayer at the temple, the Bible says after they have spoke, he has spoken to the lame, and the lame walked, the people started what? Exalting them by saying the God has come among us. But Peter and John do the whoop there, the, uh, the rib there, clothed saying that they, they refuse to take any such praise. Prior there, Peter has been sifted like a wheat. Remember? He has been sifted like a wheat. And when he has converted, he was able to strengthen his brethren. You know what I'm saying? So God will lift you up. We lift your head up. When your head is being seen up on the mountain, people may say, oh, look at him, how beautiful, handsome he is. Look at her, how beautiful she is. And you will say, no, see Christ in me. Because you have learned that the glory and the praise is not a phrase that you say. It is an attitude that you have towards God. Sometimes you can phrasely or by sentence say, I give glory to God, when actually you are taking the praise for yourself. Are you what I'm saying? But it will no longer be something that you say. It will be your full demeanor, your full character. You will refuse to be equal. And you will put yourself under the mighty hand of God. And at that point, all the cares that you have, all the souci, <laughs> all the cares of life, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? How shall I eat? How shall I drink? You see, I always said, working hard is not a blessing, is it? Is working hard a blessing? It cannot be a blessing. God wants to give you an idea where all you do is to plant it and you see it germinate. Tell me, when you plant a seed and that you have lifted all the, come uh, the weed, voila, the grass, do you go sit on that soil looking, trying so that the seed will come out? No. You do a minimum portion of the part in the process of the seed for it to germinate and grow. You do a minimum. All you do is défricher. How is it that? Huh? Huh? To clear it out, okay? The, the, the place, put your seed, and you don't hope for bets. No. You put your seed knowing. He must grow. It's different from 
Okay, well, I'm going to put it in. I hope for the best. <laughs> it doesn't work this way. You put that in knowing heal must grow. The way the seed dies in, the way it decomposes, the way he builds itself into it, the way the sand and the ground and the dirt has to now use, can you imagine, the dirt becomes now food. Are you know what I'm saying? The way God made us with the dirt, that dirt, he's turning it into food. And under there, things are going that your eye don't see. But by the time your eyes see, you see evidence. Let God show you the evidences. Let the Lord break in your life the fruit of evidences. For it says, he shall establish you and settle you. So cast all your cares upon him for he, cared, verse 7. For he cared about you. Uh -huh. For you. Casting all your care upon him. Give me that in the, in the Amplify, please. Cast, uh -huh. uh, First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Amplified. Mm -hmm. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, on him. You see, let me tell you something. One time, my wife and I, we were... Uh, we were in a, an apartment. And as we were serving God, things were tough. She was just having Abby. Abby was just about a few months or something. And then, where I was serving as a pastor, you know how much they were giving me by, per month? Imagine. 200, imagine. Per month. 200, okay. Huh? 500. How much? 1,000. Per month, they were giving me this. Zero. Literally. And I was doing almost everything. I was coming in. I was always the first in. I remember those days. My wife, uh, we have her watch like a, a, a monkey. I said, let's go. <laughs> when, when Sunday arrived, everybody in the house knew that. Uh, anyway, so I was coming, opening the door. I mean, getting the chairs in, fixing the church. And it was those church where we used to rent a school facility. So school facility, you don't leave your staff there. You know what I'm saying? You come with your staff, you go with your staff. And you must do it every time you go in that place. So I come all the time. Sometimes one or two brothers will say that we help. Between them word <laughs> and the action, only Jesus Christ knows. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I always find myself alone doing it and i've done it for two three years consistently never blench a hair i was not even thinking because i knew who i was serving and then one day here comes the lord he tells me i want you to build me a house but that day when he said it we were broke, like broke. And I'm thinking, has any man built a house with the word of God yet? <laughs> like meaning you take the word of God and then you put it. I don't know. I've never seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay. And that same day, People came and they put on the door. 
come on. At least knock the door and say if somebody inside, give the notice of eviction. You will put on the door so everybody can pass it around. We know uh, this house. <laughs> Shame. So you serve God faithfully. And your heart is upright. And all you get is a eviction letter with shame. <laughs> ah. You see, there are two types of paper. Paper will write money on it. 100, 10, 50. I didn't receive that one. Paper will write eviction on it. That's one the one I received. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay. So, we were in that place of anxiety, worries, concern. And then we said, you know what? If we don't resolute ourselves, then the devil will be the one tricking us. So my wife and I, we say, hey, we are ready to sleep in the car. And we shall serve God in that car. And we shall continue to go and to serve God. Literally. But we were in one accord and ready. So we were making plan how she's going to give, uh, I would say that, breastfeed, milk, and so, so we're, we're imagining it, whether, whether a leg is like this, and then it, like, like, whether we go to McDonald's, who we're already, like, who we're ready. <laughs> because, you know, we knew that the church ain't gonna help us. We knew that nothing will help us. So we were Ready. You were ready for war. <laughs> Is anybody go to war not ready? If you go to war not ready and things happen when you when you hear shoot, 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 shoot. Anyway. But because we were ready, the Lord knows our heart. Nobody can defraud God. Can somebody defraud God? When you tell to yourself, oh Lord, I will die with you, you look like you like Peter Black. <laughs> Get, over, get away from me. <laughs> Isn't that what I'm saying? You can scream to yourself, Oh Lord, whatever happened, I shall stay. Get away from me. Okay, next. <laughs> so God knows. But he also knows that between what you say and what you do, it's so different that you need to be sifted for a while. Because he wants to Establish and because put it this way if any winds that come has to get you worry, you will die by worry before the time of the Lord. Then there is a waste in the city. Why? Because there are people waiting for you to know the word of God. That's what I'm saying. So there will be a waste. He knows. There will be winds contrary to the will of God in your life. So it tells you, if you don't learn to hold on and submit and humble yourself under my mighty hand. When the devil just comes with a... <laughs> because when you submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, he holds you really tight. And you start learning. Let's go back to the word, please. Casting all your cares, all your anxiety, all your worry, all your concern, uh, and, and once and for all. So it's not Lord Jesus. No, uh, hey, Lord, okay, just, just, you know, I, I give it all unto you. And tomorrow, Lord, just I give it unto you. Ah, come on, is there once and? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Convince that the worst that can happen to you is to be away from God. But he's a good father. Have you ever retained something from your child knowingly that uh, when you give, it will be the right time? Have you ever retained from your child 
a desire or a, a asking of something because you know like you like you purposely imagine and, and purposely think and purposely decide that there will be a time I will give this to my child. At that time, the child sometimes even don't even remember anymore about whatever he has asked. And you yourself, all alone with your counsel, you say, Oh, I must do this for my child, this, 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 this. And yet. The Bible say we are evil men. But we know how to give what? Oh, somebody say me, the child of God, the son of God, my father is better than my earthly father. My heavenly father is better than my earthly father. I shall not want. I shall be established. I shall be settled. However the day it takes. However how long it takes. I shall be established. I shall be settled. And I shall eat the good of this land. For us, being even evil, we know how to think and to manufacture and to imagine and to desire to give good things to our children. Yeah. We are limited. How much the father of light from whom comes all good gifts. Why are you thinking that uh, you will not receive what God said you will have? He said, cast all your care and anxieties and concern once and for all on him. Meaning, Lord, this one, if it doesn't work, I ain't going to be ashamed. Everyone you know what I'm saying? He ain't going to be my shame. That's not mine. So why should I take your place? I ain't going to do that. Whatever you want to do, I say do it. For I will humble myself under your hands. Let me go on my testimony. The Lord for 10 years told me, I do not want you to work for anything where you take any money that whatever you do you must do it for free and i talked to a pastor of mine that was really in the beginning i said this is just what the lord said <laughs> you said brother you are in the united states <laughs> i said oh. he said you see we are all christian okay but christianity Jesus is not like that. <laughs> Who told you that God told you you have to do it for free? <laughs> Who told you that God told you that you have to do it for free? Have you lost your mind? You are in the United States of America. It is a man like Ika. <laughs> here if you are not a slave you end eating you have to give all your time to the government to the country so that uh, you can eat cucumber am I right so he told me that and I thought I was going to a man of God I say a man of God Meaning who knows the ways of God and can hear how God speaks. I say, Balaam, stay away from me. <laughs> from that day to today, I never spoke to him again. But I say, away from me. You try to make me deny the covenant with God because of the how the dollar looks. I have been in my life where I had money. 
I had so much money that I will just say, through money. I had so much money. And then I lost all. Meaning, all I tried by myself did not go anywhere. So I saw it. I felt it. I ate it. And then I, come on, sir. Digested it. So when the Lord comes unto me, he says, okay, give everything up. I say up. Up. I know that if I try to be the 419, Ananias, I know that the end of it is death. I know well. So why would I sell myself? I say no. And at that time, to eat, it was not easy. And then you will see opportunities coming from left and right. And I knew this, we call it the accurate thing. I cannot touch it. You see, the eye of Aiken, he saw the thing. He saw, like, ça saw briller. <laughs> Something is shining. So when he saw, oh, gold, oh, oh, it was attractive. He's like, Joshua is not around. <laughs> <laughs> For God is a, he's a witness, but a silence witness. He ain't going to say anything. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny Brie took it. It was a curse. That thing destroyed him and his entire family. Why would I think I'm better to Aiken? Tell me. Why would a man, a person, believe that this cannot happen to me, it happened only on the other one? For he says, he is God to give grace to the humble. So why should I act like uh, I'm the father of God? No. Even if some people call her Mary, the mother of God, <laughs> I didn't marry her. <laughs> so I, I don't know about that. I'm not the father of God. So I learned. Ten years. Row for row after to one to another. I knew every way and avenue how to make money. And I would teach people on how to make money. And then make it. Some of them. They say, oh, man of God, you are inspired. <laughs> but never. I remember there was a lady. She has acquired so many millions of dollars. She never thought that, I, even if, because I told her, I cannot take anything from you. She wanted to give to me, actually. And I said, no, I can't take anything. But I, I did not ask her. But what my thing is that, she could have said, okay, you cannot take it. I will give it to your church or, or whatever. But she never moved one time. And one time I asked her, whatever you have, I asked you to send it to a people in Cameroon for an orphanage. From that day to this day, she never sent it. That was the only day I asked for. My point is, 10 years, I never thought one time that God would ever allow me to do anything that has to do with business money. Never. So, all my care were cast upon him once and for all. How I'm going to eat, how I'm going to be, he's going to take care of it. And once I took that firm decision, I saw the end of God. I did see the end of God. Until he has brought us where we are today. And until he's bringing us further where he's sending us. So I know with certainty that if you cast all your cares and anxieties, you must hear God clearly. Are you what I'm saying? Because when God tells you to do something, 
And you do the contrary. You are you agree with me that you're gonna have also the result of that contrary thing. Uh, you agree with me? Things we only get tougher. There is pain to be in trial when you know you disobey God. There is great pain than when you know you obey God. For the Bible says it is better for us to suffer because we obey God than to suffer because we disobey. So, after a while, God says, now I see you. I see your heart. I know you are an upright child. I am ready to open the door. So for 10 years, I had no idea. And he saved in the bank of heaven. And the day... That he said, now, I'm going to give you wealth and riches. I want you now to do this. I, I almost thought he was a devil. <laughs> because I was like, I, I did not expect it at all. He said, I will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. Places where I knew I could not enter. <laughs> they took me in comedy by force or by fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told to somebody and I told to you all that it come a time where someone will sue you to just give you money because the person is looking for you, he doesn't find you. So he will go to court to say, okay, I'm looking for a person that I heard in the dream. The person's name is so-so and so-so and so. So he has to open the case so they will investigate to find you. And when they find you, he says, please take the one million. Please, please. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Established and settled. Say, I shall, no, 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 take it back. I am established and settled. He said, you shall not let your foot be moved. So all the dancing of the devil around and the demons dancing, we call it in Africa, big boy. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Big Bang. Big Bang is a dance. They do like that. So they're all dancing around. Don't be afraid. Do not fret. Let them dance. You see, there were four lepers. Listen. They say, as you know, because at the time when you were leper, you could not be among the camp. So there were four lepers who were outside the camp at the gate. And at the same time, the, the enemy came to encamp the Israelites. They had left five horses because they ate all the meat that were in Israelite. <laughs> And the Bible said there were five horses only left. Anyway, so they were around and camped. The king was king, but he was hungry like the people. <laughs> Everybody has hunger. And they sat down. And they said, ah, if we go back in Israel, they're going to kill us. And we'll be there. If we stay here, because this is famine, if we stay here, there's no food, we're going to die. If we go to the enemy, they're going to kill us. We're going to die. But let us go in the enemy we die with food in our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> At least they 
take it. Then put it in the mouth and shoot. Oh, mm, oh. I, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> and later we arrive with some 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 food in the in the belly in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but they understood that, listen, there is a death that is better than other death. So if I need to suffer, which suffering I shall suffer? For a while. Because I obey God. You know what I'm saying? And then, against the even idea, imagination, and anything, the Bible says, when they went, they saw the cape of the enemy was empty. That the food, the tents, the jewelry, the wealth, even the horses were there. And the Bible said, because the enemy in the night they heard an army of the angels of God coming. And they thought to themselves that the king of Israel has hired the Egyptians and the other kings to come against them. Listen, the Bible said that they were so confused that they took their feet and they ran instead of took the, the horse to... <laughs> How far can you go if you take your feet instead of taking your oars? Come on. They lost their mind. They were in a position of power. And they say, if you don't do it, you're going to have it none. I'm the one holding the dollar in my hand. If you don't serve me, you're not going to have it. And God said, ah, are you God over me? So the Lord sent the angels, the host of heaven. They heard the sound. Let me tell you something. This is not only in the Old Testament. Are you what I'm saying? Because in the New Testament, the angels came and they shook the entire jail. You know what I'm saying? What it means is that to this day, they are still serving. Are you what I'm saying? There were not angels until the Old Testament and the New Testament st and start, and now they are done away with. No. God have them for service to his saints. Then you enter the den. He knew that his flesh was going to be given for food. The lion See how God saves you. The lion that is ready to take you down. For the Bible said that lion, they were hungry. The lion that is ready to take you down. There is no way out. Once they put you in, they close it, you're done. He enters in. The lion came. They <laughs> start licking him. <laughs> like washing <laughs> all the dirt out of him. <laughs> and then they are like, here too. Go ahead. <laughs> they became friends. Just like that. Nothing. Happen to them and to him. But them lion, they were hungry, were they? They were not joke lion. How do we know it? They were not domesticated lion. Because the people who conspired, when the king came, he said, Daniel, did your God save you? Somebody is looking at you to see if your God is still alive. Are you what I'm saying? The person just is looking to see, is your God still 
a life. And you see the suffering like something that will take you down. No, God says his name shall not be ashamed. He shall not let his name be put to shame. So the lion shut up. And now the conspirators, they have been given. By the time they were being thrown in, the lion jumped out. That's how hungry they were. For David says, the pit they have dug for me, they shall fall into it. Casting all your cares and anxieties and worries. For the Bible says, for he cares for you. When God speaks to you, do not let the things of this world take away the word that God has said, the voice that you have heard, because there is reward into the promises of God. And he shall establish you and settle you. Let's finish the verse. First Peter 5. Verse 8. No, verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, mm -hmm. all your worries, and all your concerns one, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Hallelujah. Amen. If the one who sees all and who is everywhere watches over you, how would the enemy take you out? Verse 8. Verse 8. Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and, con and cautious so at all times. So be self-disciplined, sober, well-balanced, Alert and cautious because the enemy is always making a trap. So be cautious. Do not give room to the enemy. Be cautious on how you do, you deal, you walk, you say, you think, you behave. That the enemy of yours, go ahead. That, that enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But, but resist him. But, resist him. But, resist him. Now, when the devil wants to devour you, he devours you by many different methods. He can tell you, like one day, one they do to me, they say, God told you to leave everything and to serve him. Hmm. How are you going to eat? Well, that was a true question. It was a sincere question. And it was a uh, understandable question. But the problem in that question is that it was not the voice of God. Because he knew I was going to be hungry. And he told me, leave all. There is a difference between you living all out of emotions and God speaking to you to leave all. He said, for there is no one who left all for my sake who will not receive what? hundredfold. So why will I be worried? So I understood that the only thing I could do was to trust God just as he said. That's it. Be ready for war. So when the devil came, he came with kind of, uh, you know, strategies. He said, well, you don't have to take this, but you can take this way. I said, no. Because sometimes, I will do something for people, and when I have done it, they will say, ah, thank you for what you did. Eh. I say, if I take that money, it means you have paid me. So I was very careful and cautious because I told him, and I told them, if you were intentionally looking to bless me, you would have blessed me before I came to help you. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? So I will come, and then by the time I want to leave, they say, no, no, please take this. Uh, uh, man of God, I cannot. Uh, you to, they say, no. I was serious about the covenant. And then the enemy has tried. But be firm in your faith, faith against yes. his At attack. Rooted. You are to be rooted. What? Establish what? Immovable. Immovable what? Knowing, Knowing that mm -hmm. the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. In other words, God knows your cares. He knows your need. The same way all his children in the world, also he knows their need and their care. And many of them are staying strong. So why will you just bend? Amen. And then now, first thing, I say first thing, verse 10. Verse 10. After you have suffered for a little while, yes. the God of all grace, the God of all grace. Now, you're going to put now your name there. You say, after I have suffered for a little while. After I have suffered. The God of all grace. Who imparts his blessing and favor. Who imparts his blessings and favor. Who called me. Who called me. To his own eternal glory. To his own eternal glory. In Christ. In Christ. Will. Will. Himself, 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 complete, complete, confirm, confirm, strengthen, strengthen, and establish, and establish me, me, making me, making me, how I ought to be, I ought to be. Gonna make me how and what. Out to be. But I must resist. I must resist. I must resist. For the enemy is not just sleeping. But I have too much to gain in the Lord to give room to the enemy. I must resist. I must resist. The price is too important for me to give up any of my keys to the enemy. I must resist. And God says he will himself. He will himself complete me. Confirm me before people. Strengthen me in my work. Establish me in all I have. And settle me in the promise. Give me that verse. For he says, He will confirm you, will complete you. Hallelujah. What is lacking? What is missing? The things of your needs, he's going to complete it. He will complete you. He will confirm you who you are. He will strengthen you. Hallelujah. Because he says he's going to strengthen your feeble knees. So he will strengthen you. And he will establish To him be dominion. Do minion. Minion. Power. Power. Authority. Authority. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Forever and forever. And, and ever. ever. Amen. And let the church say Amen. 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 Amen.